Hey everyone, Shakra is here, or better known as Kailbot, and today I'm going to analyze Odo Amne's Trundle. For those of you who don't know Odo Amne, he's the top laner for Cloud9 EU. I've been an adept of Trundle Top for quite a while now, so I decided to ask the player what he thought of it. Odo Amne tried it and found it a strong pick, as it's a natural counter to the health stacking meta. For those of you who might not be familiar with the champion, Trundle is a very strong melee duelist that relies on stealing stats from his enemy, beside having his own steroids. He transitions into a strong tank that is also an anti-tank and potentially an anti-carry. So I'll do a quick skill breakdown. His passive is called King's Tribute, and whenever a unit near Trundle dies, he heals from 2 to 6% of his maximum health. This gives Trundle a lot of sustain, and in fights where Dragon or Baron are involved, he'll heal up a lot. His Q, Chomp, is an 80 steroid that works as an auto attack reset that will briefly steal the target. The cool part of Chomp is that it will steal AD from the enemy and give it to you. It also works on towers. His W, Frozen Domain, works similarly to his Spirit Visage, giving him increased healing. Apart from that, it will also grant him movement speed and attack speed, so another 2 or arguably 3 steroids. His E, Pillar of Ice, is a great peeling tool that changes terrain and slows target. A great tool to set up other ultimates like Orianas, Leonas, Gragas's ultimate, and also other line skill shots like Thresh's death sentence. It also knocks up targets so it can interrupt channels. His ultimate is what makes Trundle so strong in the current meta. Subjugate steals 40% of the armor and magic resist from a target. This not only allows tanky targets to become glass, but it also allows Trundle to become very tanky, allowing him to be a very strong frontliner. So far, Odo Amne has played this mostly in solo queue to test out the pick, apart from the games that he has played it competitively versus Reason Gaming and Meteor Makers in the Scan UK tournament. To enlighten a bit more about Odo Amne's reasoning behind the pick versus Reason Gaming and MYM, they were against two tanks, Mundo Shivana and Oriana on game 1, who also has a shield that will give resist. Trundle was a perfect pick versus these comps, as it allows him to render one of the tanks almost useless. So let's start off with runes. Looking at Odo Amne's uh, locking page, it was pretty easy to figure out what he was running. Attack damage marks, armor seals, magic resist flat glyphs, one attack damage quintessence, and two health regen quintessences. He also stated that lifesteal can be used versus favorable matchups like Dr. Mundo, as it'll scale very well with Boy of the Druin King, Frozen Domain, and Spirit Visage. Also for Glyphs, another solid pick if you're facing an AD top laner is cooldown reduction. That allows Trundle to output more damage with a more frequent Q and lower cooldowns on his other skills, which have uh, a medium to long cooldown. He ran Magic Resist versus Mundo because there were four champions on the enemy team that dealt magic damage. Magic Resist was also ran versus Shivana as she does have magic damage from Burnout, which is her main damage ability in early laning. Now, onto Masteries, and as it would be expected for any top lane bruiser, Odo Amne runs 921-0. Let's break down the most important points. So, starting with the offense tree, and in tier 1, he's running Sorcery. Now, these points could be ran in Fury, but Trundle already has his Frozen Domain and potentially attack speed items. The 5% CDR let him use his skills much more, uh, especially because every skill except for Chomp is on a relatively longer cooldown. On tiers 2 and 3, he runs Brute Force and Martial Mastery, more AD that will go extremely well with his relatively offensive setup and his Chomp. Remember that Chomp has a scaling of 100% with AD that will be 120% by rank 5. Now onto defense, and the first two tiers are obvious here. Health regen, damage reduction, health are all important stats for a tank. In tier 3, he runs Resistance. You need Magic Resist versus Dr. Mundo, so naturally, Odo Amne picked up more MR. If you're a versus a heavy AD champion like Renekton, you can change those points over to Hardiness. He also ran these points versus Shivana because Shivana does mainly magic damage in the laning phase. Now, tier 4, Perseverance. A bit overlooked when the Masteries were first released, but they're really strong Masteries for a tankier champion, as they give you health regen based on your missing health. Tier 4, Evasive, as stated before, Cloud9 was versus 4 champions that could do magic damage. Not only that, Mundo, Shivana, and Orianna all do AoE magic damage. The points in Legendary Guardian and Tenacious are pretty straightforward, nothing to add here. Now for skill order, and on Trundle you'll want to max Chomp first for damage output, followed by Frozen Domain for more attack speed, move speed, and healing increase, and Pillar of Ice is mainly used as a utility skill, so it's not as important to rank up. 
Now onto the build, and Trundle should be built mainly as a tank with either one or two damage items. His core revolves around itemizing against his lane opponent and then going for a Blade of the Rune King, which will give him a major power spike. Odoane usually starts Torrent Shield plus one health potion, undeniably the strongest start for almost any bruiser. Other options include starting Flask, but they're not as strong as Doran's Shield. Versus AD, you'll see Odoamne rushing Sunfire Cape, followed by a Blade of the Rune King. After these two core items, it will mostly depend on what he needs versus each comp. His third item will usually be a Spirit Visage or a Randuins, and the fourth pick will usually be what he didn't get as a third item. To round out on the build, you'll see him either going tankier with items like Thornmail or a second damage item in the form of Trinity Force. Spirit Visage is naturally good on anyone who builds lifesteal or has any kind of healing effect as it amplifies these effects. On Trundle it's even better because his W actually gives him another 20% heal increase, making him a tough champion to kill with all the resist and lifesteal he can use to tank in teamfights. So let's move on to mostly your favorite part which is gameplay and Talking a bit about uh, early game, both games top lane was kind of stale and not much happened. It's really what you'd expect from the current meta, two beefy champions going back and forth and not really being able to kill each other. Also in both games, Odwamne rushed uh, Sunfire Cape despite Mundo dealing mostly magic damage. This is because he considers that Mundo's damage isn't worth itemizing against early, so the Sunfire Cape gives Trundle what he lacks the most, which is wave clear. So it allows him to push forward and not get his tower taken so easily. So in game 1, nothing happened until 11 minutes in when Fabivan and Ku roam top to kill Mundo. Not much to say here, he gets ulted by Gragas and Trundle and finished off in about 2 seconds. What's important about this fight is how Odoamne prepared for it beforehand. He chunked Mundo down constantly, forcing him always to use ult to stay in lane. He didn't let him back by always pressuring the lane, and then it was an easy kill. Now 25 minutes in and C9EU decide to go for the Baron. Odoamne secures it with the auto attack and they go for the fight. Now Odoamne and Voidal were pretty much key in this fight and were the reason why C9 pulled ahead. So let's look at the fight before I break it down. So Voidal catches Mundo with Death Sentence, he then goes in, flays Mundo, and places the box perfectly before flashing out. This box catches Shivana and Mundo inside, and Odoamne sets up a perfect pillar that won't allow Mundo or Shivana to run. The pillar is also zoning Sivir from the fight, and Karma and Oriana are too far to do anything useful. Meanwhile Trundle ulted Mundo, meaning he'll become relatively easy to kill, since he just lost a large part of his resist. Also, his perfectly placed pillar makes it very easy for Fabivan to ult, bringing Mundo and Shivana back into the fight. Despite only turning into a 1 for 0 in favor of Cloud9, this was the fight that gave C9 the first gold advantage, after picking up Baron and the kill. 29 minutes in and C9 decide to siege the tier 2 turret in mid lane. After getting it successfully, they seek to retreat, but Reason Gaming is looking for blood. Let's see the fight break out. So, Oriana only hits Gragas with the ultimate, which ends up being useless because Gragas can just body slam away. Reason Gaming still wants to engage, however. Mundo pops Sadism and Shivana pops Dragon's Descent. Now, look at Voidal's and Odoamne's reaction time. Voidal immediately places his box down to stop Shivana and Mundo, and Odoamne ults Shivana, turning her into a very squishy dragon. The other problem is that Fabivan's ultimate left Sivir at about 20% HP, so she can't go in and follow her front line. After killing Shivana, Odoamne tries to catch Sivir with Flash, but isn't close enough. A perfect pillar at the entrance of the base forces the Flash out of an almost dead Dr. Mundo. Just to show once more how Pillar of Ice is a great skill to set up follow-up skills, here's an example that catches out Sivir in the jungle. So after catching Sivir and 34 minutes in and after getting an inhibitor, 
So Biffin's beautiful ultimate on Gragas allowed C9 to pick up the win and go 1-0 versus Reason Gaming. Now, game 2 versus MIM was a bit faster paced. Nope, I was joking, it really wasn't. Uh, so, 6 minutes in, uh, Odo Amne dies to Makata's gank, thinking that he had probably left top lane, only to be surprised by Dr. Mundo's persistence. Apart from this, this game was pretty stale in top lane, until 18 minutes in, when Q roams top and they kill Kuban who is on Shivana. We really can't see this kill because I wasn't spectating at the time and I only had access to the tournament VODs, but I'd like to focus on one thing, Trundle's ultimate and its cooldown. So, at 17 minutes and 13 seconds, Odoamne does what seems to be a random ultimate on Shivana. This was not at all random. He was losing to her and, to stay in lane, used his ultimate to heal up. He knows he has a fairly short cooldown, so he'll have it when he needs it. They wait on the cooldown before diving Shivana and pick up the kill. Ziggs then comes along to try to get the kill on Odoamne, but Ku manages to kill him off before he can, with a great pillar trapping Ziggs in place. The only real mistake I saw from Odo Amne as Trundle was in the dragon fight 20 minutes in. A beautiful satchel by Ziggs delays the C9 engage. Odo Amne ults Shivana, but decides to go for the backline to kill Ziggs. Now, whilst this isn't a bad decision by itself, the problem was that the pillar and the Gragas ult combo didn't work out for Cloud9. Fabiffin ends up pushing away Ziggs and Lucian from danger instead of putting them closer to the C9 lineup. The tank frontline of MYM dispatches C9's bot lane and moves to Auto Amne to pick up an easy kill and go 3 for 1 in that fight. Now, 28 minutes in and C9 was actually behind in gold when they decided to go for Baron. They had just killed the enemy jungler, so they saw a prime opportunity to get the lead. The focus here doesn't go for Auto Amne, but rather for the whole squad that react very fast to any attempt to contesting the Baron. Fabivan instantly kills Ziggs and Hjarnan kills Makler with a bit of help from Odo Amne. The game ends in a weird fashion, Chulio gets caught again by Fabivan and Kubon decides to engage 1v2 because his bot lane was going to help. Again, Trundle's ultimate completely melts Shivana and Odo Amne picks up an easy kill. With a 4 vs 3 on their hands, Cloud9 clean up the rest of the fight and beat Meteor Makers in a 2-0 series. Yeah, I know, another kind of long analysis. I realize this length isn't for everyone, but I hope you guys enjoyed yet another episode of the Analysis Corner. Remember to leave a like if you, well, liked the video, I guess, and remember to subscribe. Much more content coming soon, as I'm going to have a break from university. As always, I'll see you guys in the Rift, Shakra is signing out.